pays off. Will you tell me, if you were going to explain The Sims to somebody, can you tell me what the game Sims 4 is about and how you play? It's about making people and building buildings and helping them learn stuff. Are you nervous about this interview? Oh. Yeah. Hello and welcome to this Games for Change 2020 well played game session. Sims 4 co-play with a kindergartner. My name is Sabrina Solba. I'm a game designer and a mom, and I'm here with a special guest, my daughter Hazel. Go ahead, go for it. Hello! Who will help to co-host this session. Before we start talking about the game, we'd like to introduce the concept of well played. It means that you have lots of practice. Okay. And you love it and you play it a lot. Okay. And you never stop, even though your parents say you have to stop even in the night time. <laughs> well, lots of praxis is definitely something Hazel has with The Sims. So these kinds of talks have been done at Games for Change before, introduced by Drew Davidson, the director of Carnegie Mellon's Entertainment Technology Center, which also publishes Well Plays in essay form under their ETC Press publishing house. The idea is to give a kind of close reading of video games, one that strives to deeply reflect on the experience of playing a game. Sometimes these are very analytical or technical, digging into the details of the game's craft. Sometimes they are personal commentaries on how we as players engage with and make meaning from games. This will mostly be the latter, though we'll talk a little about the game's design as well. When I was considering what to do for this well-played session, what was most on my mind was the suddenly redefined world our family had found ourselves in. Games have been one strategy we have been leveraging as a family to cope with this new reality. And so I felt that what I wanted to do for this session was to somehow reflect on the ways we co-play games with our daughter and to capture what some of that meant here in 2020 for me as a designer and a mom and I wanted to involve Hazel. So I asked her if she'd be willing to be filmed and interviewed about a game of her choice. She picked Sims 4. As Hazel already said, The Sims 4 is a game where you make people build buildings and help them learn stuff. If I were to put more game dev lingo on it, The Sims can be described as a sandbox simulation game. Now, Sims 4 is not a new game, it was released by Electronic Arts in 2014, so it is nearly as old as Hazel herself. And Sims 4 clearly isn't designed for Hazel's demographic. The mouse and keyboard controls are complex. The reading level of in-game text can hover around middle school. And there is some content that, although decidedly censored in how it is presented in the game, is clearly touching on topics usually omitted in children's media. So it might seem like an odd choice of a game for a six-year-old. Actually, all of these factors have made Sims 4 a good candidate for co-play. There's plenty of room for our presence as parents to meaningfully mediate the game for her, which we'll talk about. Here's how Hazel explains how we ended up playing Sims 4. So I was, when I was playing this like art thing where you could make stuff in art, and I was saying that this would prep me for Sims. Right, so you already knew about The Sims. Yes, because I already started watching the video. Ellie V is a YouTuber in Australia who makes videos of Lego builds, particularly Lego Friends. And she's done a whole series on converting Lego Friends characters into Sims 4 and building them custom homes, which Hazel really enjoyed. So you watched the videos, you watched Ellie V's videos. And then... And you, so you knew about The Sims. Yes. And then... And you then, started using this other thing? What was the other thing? It was like this art thing that could go on the computer. MS3D paint. And what were you making in MS3D paint? I was making a house with a family, a mom, a dad, and two kids. And how was that going? Uh, pretty well. Yeah. Why and did you need Sims then? Well, I wanted someone where I could actually play with them because 3D paint, they weren't movable. Oh, they didn't move? Yes. What Hazel didn't tell you is that her Paint 3D house building was completely pushing the limits of what Paint 3D could do. 
Her large model scenes would take forever to load, if they loaded at all. The program chugged under the weight of rendering all the objects. We looked at the trajectory of the kinds of things she wanted to build, and we decided that we needed a new tool to continue to support her, something with rich building of spaces and people. Hazel also didn't mention Family Nights watching Netflix Grand Design and the world's most extraordinary homes together, or her increasingly elaborate physical Lego builds with her dad, leading up to her foray into Paint 3D. So for our family, Sins 4 is a continuation of our efforts to support Hazel's identity as a builder and designer. Why do you like building so much? Because I get to design stuff. And you like designing things? Mm-hmm. What does designing mean to you? Like art and building. What does the designer get to do when it comes to making a building? They think about how the building should look and how strong it should be and what shape. And the Sims 4 is good for me because I not only I just like building, I like designing people. Tell me about some of your creations. My most recent creation, not my most recent, but my, like, I think my recent friend's creation. So, our Ronan Lazlo. This house is really cool because Ronan's bedroom, I love it. This is one of the first things you made after the coronavirus came? Yes. It really reminds me of their house. Yes, it does. It's not exactly like it. Yeah. But I think when you look at the house, especially inside, it's easy to recognize it as their house. The layout really makes me feel like I'm looking at their house. Yes, especially the living room. The, the living, living room was really one good. of the best one I made. Mm-hmm. I feel kind of nostalgic because usually we go over to their house. But when you went to the kids' rooms, you weren't really trying to keep it true to the kids' room. No, I wasn't. What was your goal? I was just trying to make it what they would like. And we're currently working on Cece's house, which is my grandma. Cece is Hazel's nickname for my mom, who lives four hours from us. Normally, during the Games for Change Festival, Hazel would be spending a week at Cece's house, while her dad and I are in New York City, but not this year. In fact, we haven't seen Cece in person at all yet in 2020. So Hazel and I sat down to make her house together. That's nice. What do you think? Like it, but I do have a pot in mind. Oh. Which pot did you have in mind? It wasn't a plant pot. You know there's this like, big pot right next to the mantle? Here we go. Ah, the Jerusalem pigs. It's really big. I need to shrink it to get No. Oh, oh, next to it. Yeah. Uh, you can press it there. Good, you can move it a little closer now. How'd you do that? You pulled the alt key. Alt key, got it. Co-play with Hazel in Sims 4 means providing mechanical support, shortcut keys, help with reading, navigating menu options. But co-play is also about how we share creative control. When we were making Cece in her house, I deliberately deferred to Hazel on all design choices because I wanted to see how my mom was reflected through Hazel's creation. Rice, right? Oh, beautiful. I think that looks very nice. It does look very nice. Very bright. Very cozy. cozy. Mm-hmm. Looks like um, the living room. Yeah. Feedback is very important to Hazel. She loves an audience for her creations, and playing Sims 4 offers satisfying moments for feedback from us and from the game. There you go. There you go. She's happy. She likes the room. Hazel particularly thrives on working with a theme for her creations. Sometimes it's real people we know. Sometimes it's fictional characters from books and shows. Sometimes it's just unicorns. I got the idea for making a house shaped like a unicorn. What gave you that idea? I don't know. It just popped into my head. It's pretty cool. I like the rainbow... Chest? 
Yeah, so like, that's you a know nice how detail. like some foxes have like this like um like white thing on the bottom. Mm-hmm. That's what. But I couldn't do it on like the bottom. I couldn't do it like on the ceiling of that like that swimming pool. So I could only do it on the top where it's visible. And that horn is clear, so it's kind of like a skylight. Also, as you can see, I used uh, uh, chimneys as the ears for the unicorn. How do you decide how to decorate the rooms? Well, based off of what I like, or like based off of what the theme is. The theme is, and what's the theme of this house, obviously? Unicorn Unicorn crazy. Unicorn crazy. There are also moments in our co-play where our role is more participatory in the game. When you were making the tiger house, Daddy was using the mouse, and what were you doing? I was watching. Were you just watching and letting him do what he wanted to do? No, I was telling him what to do. <laughs> well, no. That's been my experience with you. Daddy actually made the walls and colored it, uh-huh. but I decorated it. See, tigers have that white thing on the bottom, so yeah, I did that. that. This the- is in the desert because tigers are usually in like hot jungles. Wait, so I want to I wanna ask, do you like decorating the fantasy houses more, or do you like decorating the sort of real houses, like the houses of your friends or our house or Cece's house? Well, I more like to decorate, like, made-up houses because then I don't really, I can do what I want, not just having to match it with what it really looks like. So you like the more freedom? Yeah. You said you like doing whatever you want. But then for Lo- Rowan and Laszlo's house, you did re- you did what you wanted for their rooms anyway. You didn't try to make it match the real world. Yeah, because I didn't really have what other rooms actually looked like. I see. So you didn't have, because Sims 4 didn't offer what you knew was in their real world bedrooms. Then you decided, well, since I can't make it look like their bedroom, I guess I'll just make it look however I want. Or what they would probably want. Okay. Well, it's not, not whatever you want. Whatever you think they would want. Yes. When Hazel's themes are centered on characters, our real-world people, she's learning to take on the perspective of others as a constraint to guide her design decisions. It's interesting how little creative prompt Hazel gets from within The Sims. Most of what she creates has its roots and inspiration from her life outside the game. The way we came to and played The Sims means that its role is more as a tool. We aren't looking to play the game so much as have The Sims facilitate Hazel's creative vision and we're happy to use any of the many Sims 4 cheat codes to do so. When we play The Sims together, we often use extra codes, like cheat codes. Yes. Can you tell me what cheat codes you use? So a close code where you can actually move stuff off the grid and where you can actually intersect stuff so you can put it into stuff. And what do you use that cheat code for? So like when we were building Cece's house, I wanted to make the table look long without making it bigger. So I use that cheat code to make the tables intersect with each other. Mm, So that it looks like one big long table. Yes. Hazel is often engaging in casual storytelling as she creates, sometimes giving detailed backstory as to why she set up things just so. It's it's like it's like it's like balanced against the table, so she can like draw like a copy of the picture. Oh, you think she's drawing that drawing from that, or maybe uh-huh. that's the thing she did draw. Yeah, but she keeps it up because she really likes that cat, and it reminds her of Onyx. She kind of delights in these implicit narratives. What's ironic is that The Sims has a storytelling engine, but Hazel doesn't play it that much, at least not yet. For her, the story is infused in the act of creation and she's mostly not looking for events or changes to occur without her control. In fact, places where the sim simulation engine takes matters into its own hands are the places that have left, not scars, but memorable lessons learned for Hazel. So I want to ask you about something that happened a little bit after you started playing The Sims. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting here, Mm -hmm. and you were playing The Sims, Mm -hmm. and I heard this sound, and at first I didn't realize what it was, and then I turned around, and you were crying, staring at the Sims. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I think it was because when I made our family at the beach house, when we got the beach pack, uh, our, the Sims' dad that I made, which is actually my real dad, uh, he didn't die in real life, just he died in the Sims. He died in the Sims? Yes. What happened? So, uh, the kidney caught on fire, the stove caught on fire, and he died because he was in the fire. And you were really sad? Yes. 
fires are really hard to put out. What do you do now when you build kitchens? Do you add anything else to the kitchen? Because I uh, noticed that you seem to start, you've added things to the kitchen now. A sprinkler system. You install a sprinkler system in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I, I did, before I didn't know what it was, but I now I know that I really need it. Also, the sprinkler system. I don't. I wish you could put it on the outside. So because it's not, it's not really nice when you put it on the inside. You don't like how it looks. Yeah, because I wish space. I could cover it up. And I've had another accident with it where I made this camping family, which actually lived out in like a tent, and the mom died. Uh, but I didn't save, so... You just lost them? Yeah. But we got her back, and also, I remember where, when I was doing, when you were fixing it, I was, like, writing down notes. Note to self. Don't put the cha chairs too close to the fire. Is that what happened? Wait. Uh, yeah, that was what happened. What do you think about the fact that Sims can die? I would don't really like that. You don't like it? Yeah. Although the Sims are very realistic. I want to ask you a little bit more about our family and the Sims. Mm -hmm. So our family has... Also, we had a cat that died in real life. His name was Onyx in? and it was black and the cat was black. So I actually made it in the Sims and uh, I've turned off... Uh, so, it could probably die because you can actually accept dying in The Sims. But I turned off like like uh, like birthdays and stuff. So you turned off aging? Yes. And who else is in our family? So you mentioned we had Onyx. Uh, we had a uh, like a college student that lived in our house for, for like a summer, I think. Mm -hmm. And her name was Mickey and now she never leaves in The Sims that we made. She had to go home to Japan. Yes, but in The Sims, she now is living. She's not, I put her into a household. Mm -hmm. So she's part of her family. And we now have an extra house in The Sims 4, which is called the Rainbow House. And it's where a Mickey and uh, another person lives. A kid for me. And so... Why did you make another kid? Uh, I just wanted to. Do you like the idea of having another kid in the house? Yes. I'll have someone to play with, finally. And do you wish you had another kid in the house right now? Yes, because when you guys are doing work, I'll actually have someone to play with. And when it's nighttime, we go and secret missions together. <laughs> you would like that? Yes. There's, isn't there a second Hazel in one of the houses yes, that has our Yes, the family? beach house, the beach house one. It was like, because the beach house one, um... Like, uh, like kids, like six-year-olds or five-year-olds couldn't be a mermaid, but teenagers can. So I made a teenager version of me, and so she could actually be a mermaid. So that you could be a mermaid? Uh -huh. Okay. So as Hazel continues to explore Sims 4, there are times that the game thwarts her own goals, and she has to find ways to adapt. And sometimes, a newly discovered feature gives her more ways to double down on what she seems most interested in, her own creations brought to life. Do a uh, first person view of that. You have to see what it looks like. It looks incredible. See? Mm-hmm. Her necklace is really pretty, too. Why do you use first person view? Because I could actually, um, so instead of, like, me, like, kind of like a camera when they film stuff, like, it's actually me, like, I'm, like, my computer is, like, the person's face. Okay. So I'm like the person's face seeing what the person sees. So it's like a close-up view with, with like, without like the person in front of you. Do you like that mode? Yes, I do. It's better for me. Why do you like it? Because like when they cook, I can actually see closer. And also when the phone is, when I can see the phone, it actually actually looks like a phone. So you like all the details you can see when you yes. see it in first person? Yes. Also, I have one very weird experience with a first person film. So when uh, Cece has been washing her hands in The Sims, and when I look at the mirror, her glasses don't look clear. I can't see her eyes. They look like sunglasses. Mm. And she's not wearing sunglasses. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah. It's been bugging me. Mm. What's your favorite thing to do in first person mode? Mm, I like to see how they walk up the stairs and like, like I, I can actually move them, move the head. Well, the head doesn't actually move. 
I don't know because I'm in first person, but how Hazel plays the game and reacts to its features and constraints reveals the fantasies she holds about herself and our lives. These are fantasies wrapped up in her sense of identity and in her desire to create and understand the world around her. As she has grown more adept at her play in the game, Sims 4 has also become a lens for her to reflect on what the game has to say about the nature of reality and her own autonomy. I have an idea. What if someone is actually playing us? And we're playing the Sims, and someone's actually playing this. And when my character plays the Sims, um, they're actually playing the person that's actually playing the Sims, and so on and so on. And there's even a bigger person playing the Sims on. So we're like in like a video game. What if that happens? I think that that's true. Might be. There are some kinds of moments that only a game like The Sims 4 can really create. Surreal moments that can also be beautifully poignant. While putting together the footage for this well played, I had Hazel sim of herself and the teenage copy she made go stargazing together. I showed Hazel the clip and she started narrating their conversation. They're like, look at the moon, it's so pretty tonight. Yeah, it is. We should go visit there on the rocket ship. I don't think we can yet. I know, I'm just being silly. Is that the kind of conversation you'd have with your teenage self? Yes. Every parent knows that each moment in a young child's life is fleeting. What was true a week ago won't be true next week. Sims 4 will probably remain a part of our family play for a while, I think. But already, Hazel has largely shifted to a new building favorite, Minecraft. Do you think you're going to keep playing The Sims? Um, I'm not really into The Sims right now. I'm basically into Minecraft right now. And there's something very similar about Minecraft and The Sims and something very different. So I'm going to start with the different thing. So Minecraft is like just blocks, mm -hmm. if you don't know what it is. It's just like, like squares. All of it is squares. It also could be my, uh, rectangles. There's different shapes, but yeah. they're they're blocky, you'd say. Yes, they're very blocky. How so, about in The Sims? So in The Sims, they're kind of like everyday stuff. Like they can be round, they can be like pointy. That's just lots of different shapes. Yes. Oh, how are they the same? Uh, so they're both the similar because you can build with them. And I really like building stuff for games. I literally like game building. Minecraft comes with new kinds of co-play opportunities, mainly playing with friends. With Minecraft, our parental co-play role is more about technical facilitation and as an appreciative audience for the elaborate creations and worlds she and her friends build during virtual playdates. For us, Hazel's parents, 2020 has been a banner year for major upheavals in the world and in our lives. For Hazel, We've joked that she might well look back at this as an idyllic time in her childhood, one where she got to spend all day with mommy and daddy, not go to school, and spend hours playing games. How will she remember and process our time together in Sims 4 when she's older? What will be the anecdotes that stick with her? One of the first game modifications we activated in the Sims 4 for Hazel was the one that stops Sims from aging. It's the one cheat we use that is actually embedded as a setting in the game, accessible through the graphical interface. But I turned off like, like, uh, like birthdays and stuff because I don't want my own self to grow up into a teenager. I know there's a good chance that sometime in my future I'm going to load up the save file of Hazel Sims 4 version of our family and think wistfully about our lives in this moment. Here, Hazel's created a snapshot of herself at six. Her interests, her sensibilities, her important relationships, her fantasies. She's frozen in time, along with us, her parents, with grandmas and beloved pets, and parted friends and favorite story characters. There's no stopping Hazel growing up. I can't turn off her aging or my own. At this moment, she is young enough to still engage with co-play still reliant on us to guide and mediate her play experiences. But she is also rapidly establishing her own independent roots as a player and as a person. And I guess I'm grateful for the lens Sims 4 has given us in this time to see and appreciate this moment together. 
All right, Hazel, we're about done. Is there anything else that you want to say about playing The Sims or playing games with your parents? Um, they're fun. <laughs> All right, can you say goodbye?